Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on an introduction to mixed ANOVA. As always, if you find this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. A mixed ANOVA is a type of analysis of variance. And here I'll be looking at a very specific design. This is a two-way mixed ANOVA, which is a type of a two-way repeated measures ANOVA. And the mixed ANOVA has a lot of names. There's a mixed design ANOVA, there's a mixed factor ANOVA, mixed factorial ANOVA, as well as a split plot ANOVA. So in a mixed ANOVA, you have the same participants being observed multiple times, and you have a between subjects factor. So I'll build an example that I'll use for this video. Let's say that you have 60 participants and you have a special type of group therapy that you have developed and you believe it'll be effective for treating anxiety and you believe that its effectiveness will last for some time. So it'll be effective if you measure anxiety right after the group therapy is completed and it'll also be effective if you measure six months later. And at the same time, you believe that the effectiveness may be different based on gender. So male participants may respond differently to the group therapy than female participants. So let's look at the within subjects factor first. That's the multiple measurements. So you have a pretest for anxiety, some particular anxiety instrument, a psychometric instrument. Then you have the group therapy. Then you have a post-test using that same anxiety instrument. And then a post-test six months later, again, with the same instrument. That's your within subjects factor. Your between subjects factor, and this example would be gender, male and female. That would be one independent variable with two levels. So for a two-way mixed ANOVA, you're going to have three null hypotheses. The first null hypothesis states that the means of the levels of the within subjects factor are equal. So the means of the pretest and the post-test right after the treatment and the post-test six months later, those means would be equal. That's the first null hypothesis. The second null hypothesis is that the means of the levels of the between subjects factor are equal. So the means between the male participants and the female participants would be equal. That's the second null hypothesis. The third null hypothesis for a two-way mixed ANOVA is that you have no interaction effect. No interaction effect. So that's the mixture of the between subjects factor and the within subjects factor. The interaction between those two factors. The null hypothesis here would be that there is no interaction effect. So let's take a look at the elements of a two-way mixed ANOVA. You have two independent variables in this design. You have the within subjects factor and that factor needs to have two or more categorical related groups. So in this example, you have the pretest and two post-tests. They are related. They are dependent on one another. You would expect the post-tests to be affected by the pretest. Each post-test is dependent on that pretest score. That's a within subjects factor. You also have a between subjects factor. And that factor needs to have two or more categorical unrelated groups. And that's what you have in this example with gender. You have male participants and female participants. They're unrelated groups. Another element of two-way mixed ANOVA is you need to have one dependent variable. And this dependent variable needs to be measured at an interval or ratio level of measurement. This is also known as a continuous level of measurement. The difference between interval and ratio is that interval 
variables do not have a true zero, and ratio variables do have a true zero. So if you look at the Fahrenheit temperature scale versus the Kelvin temperature scale, on Fahrenheit, the difference between the observations is equal throughout the whole scale. So the difference between 20 and 25 degrees is the same difference as you would see between 90 and 95 degrees. It's the same change in temperature. So the Fahrenheit scale qualifies as an interval level of measurement. However, zero on the Fahrenheit scale does not represent an absence of heat. So it's not a true zero. The zero doesn't represent an absence of the construct that's being measured by the Fahrenheit scale. Kelvin is different, however. Zero degrees Kelvin is a total absence of heat. So the Kelvin temperature scale is a ratio level of measurement. So let's take a look at the assumptions for a two-way mixed ANOVA. The first assumption we have here is the assumption of normality. We look for a normally distributed dependent variable for each combination of the levels of the independent variables. So looking at the example that I've been using, we have a pretest and then a post-test immediately after the group therapy. We'll call that post-test one. And then a post-test six months later, we'll call that post-test two. So we have three levels of that within subjects factor, pretest, post-test one, and post-test two. We also have a between subjects factor, another independent variable, gender, that has two levels, male and female. So that gives us six combinations, six distributions that we want to test to make sure that they are normal. Male and pretest, male and post-test one, and male and post-test two, as well as female and pretest, female and post-test one, and female and post-test two. So six combinations. Now to test for normality, we usually use a few different methods and combine that information and consider all the results. One test that you could use is the Shapiro-Wilk. That's usually evaluated at an alpha of 0.05. So Shapiro-Wilk produces a probability value, a p-value. If it's less than 0.05, that would lead you to believe that your data are not normally distributed. If it's greater than 0.05, that would indicate your data are normally distributed. You also want to look at the skewness and kurtosis for each distribution and the histogram for each distribution. The next assumption here is the assumption of homogeneity of variances. And like the assumption of normality, you have to consider this assumption for each combination of the levels of the independent variables. Homogeneity of variances is often tested with the Levine's test. And again, the alpha for that is typically 0.05. So if you have a p-value of less than 0.05, you would assume you have violated the assumption of homogeneity of variances. A p-value of greater than 0.05, you'd assume you have met the assumption of homogeneity of variances. The next assumption is homogeneity of covariance matrices. The assumption of homogeneity of covariance matrices is often tested with the boxes test. And then the last assumption we have here for a two-way mixed ANOVA is the assumption of sphericity. And sp sphericity means we have equality of variances of the differences between the levels of the within subjects factor for each level of the between subjects factor. Oftentimes, Mockley's test is used to test the assumption of sphericity. I hope you found this video on an introduction to two-way mixed ANOVA to be useful. Thanks for watching.